Mr. True, how you doing today? I'm going to be talking today about imaginary numbers, like hardly don't even exist, but yet we still need them in mathematics. Now, imaginary numbers really in a textbook are called complex numbers. They have two parts. They have a real part and an imaginary part, or A plus BI. Now, what do I mean by imaginary? Where does it even come up? Maybe if you have started solving for parabolas yet, or doing the quadratic formula, you might have noticed that sometimes you don't get an answer. You, you know, where you try and do the square root and you end up with a negative number inside. And that's where imaginary numbers come into play. The square root of negative 1 is equal to i. Now, there's some things in math that we teach as a rule that I can do a pretty good job of teaching my students, like why that works or how. Uh, this one's a little bit tough for that. So, we're just going to let this letter i stand for the square root of negative 1. i for imaginary. Now, why is it imaginary? Because if you square root negative 1 or you try and come up with a square root, there's not two numbers that you can multiply by themselves to give you negative 1. Like the square root of 4 is 2. Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4. But what two numbers can you multiply together to give you negative 1? They don't exist. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Maybe it's the square root of negative 1 is positive 1. 1 times 1 is still positive 1. You cannot take the even root of a negative number. So we must give it this imaginary um, identity of i. Well, one fact that we're going to use quite a bit today is i squared. Now, i squared, i squared is, well, just as it says, i times i, or the square root of negative 1 squared. Well, what happens when you square a square root? Don't they cancel out? Yes, they do. So, those are going to cancel out, and we get that i squared is equal to negative 1. So, i is the square root of negative 1. But then i squared is negative 1. And this is how we can use these imaginary numbers in math calculations, because as we manipulate them more and more, sometimes we're able to um, cancel out that square root that we have there and actually get a real number back that we can use in a later calculation. OK. Uh, i to the third is i times i squared, well, we just said i squared was what? i squared was negative 1. So i to the third is negative i. And then i to the fourth is, well, that's i squared times i squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. Now, I'm giving you these four values or powers of i, because in your book, you might be using those for some questions. Now, I'm not going to use the third and fourth power for what I'm about to run through for my students in pre-calc. And this also applies to an Algebra 2 class. I'm going to be focusing on that i is the square root of negative 1, and i squared then becomes negative 1, not the square root, but just negative 1. Uh, we are not doing this in my math class, but in case you are, if you're trying to graph or draw um, where these imaginary numbers are on the x-y axis. Well, we don't really have an x-y axis when we're talking about imaginary numbers. No, we have a real axis and an imaginary axis. Now, you notice I took out the x and put in real, which is first. I took out the, the y and put in imaginary, which is the second number. So when you go to graph these, it's going to seem like you're graphing a regular point. 2, 3i is over 2 and up 3. Negative 1 minus 4i is left and down. So negative 1 minus 4i is there. And then this is just 6i. Well, where is the real part? Right there. No left right movement, just go up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's a super quick example of how you can draw or graph these three imaginary values. Now let's get into what my kids are doing, which is just some basic algebraic manipulation, manipulations that involve the value of i. OK, let me make sure i got some time left. 10 minutes. OK. Let's run through. I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can because I want to get a lot of examples done in the next 10 minutes. 
we've got 3 plus 2i minus 4 um, plus 5i. Well, I'm just giving you some binomials, two complex numbers, and ask you to basically simplify. And you're going to do this just like you deal with your generic little uh, combining like terms and getting rid of parentheses things. Distribute to get the negative through the parentheses. And look for like terms. 3 and negative 4. Negative 1. What about 2 and negative 5? Well, 2 minus 5 is negative 3i, real and imaginary. So, it looked very similar to basic algebra skills you've done for a long time. Let's take a look at this example. Negative 3 plus 7i squared. Oh, how many times do I see kids mess this up? We're going to be binomial squared. It's not 3 squared and 7 squared. No, 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 no. It's negative 3 plus 7i squared is negative 3 plus 7i times negative 3 plus 7i. Please take the time and save your teacher a lot of grief and actually distribute those together, please, so that you have all the terms. You don't miss one. Negative 3 and negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 and positive 7 is negative 21. And going to the next set of lines is negative 21 again. I. And then positive 49 I squared. And here we start, this is the only place where there's a difference when you're working with complex numbers compared to just a regular algebra. Instead of this just being like an x squared, it's i squared. Well, we just talked about, oops, I erased it. We just talked about how i squared was equal to negative 1. So this i squared comes out, and then its place goes negative 1. And now we're going to combine like terms. We have 9, and this is going to be negative 49. So negative 49 plus 9 is negative 40. And we have two like terms with our i's. Now, they're not i squared, so the i's going to stay there. Negative 21 and negative 21 is negative 42i. Now, for proper form, I need to write this in the other way because the real should come before the imaginary. So negative 40 minus 42i. Bam! All right, moving on. Did I wake you up? Uh, let's take a look at this. The square root of negative 81 times the square root of negative 32. You cannot work with radicals that have negative numbers inside of them. If you just multiply these together and get positive, whatever, I can't do that in my head, you are going to get a number that's much, much too big. Uh, excuse me, not too big. You get a sign error. Your answer, you believe that you think your answer is positive, but you'll see in a minute it's actually supposed to be negative. If you have negatives and their real values inside your square root symbols, you need to pull those out as i's before you start. Now 81, the square root of 81 is what? It's, it's 9. And what's the square root of negative 1? Because 81 is negative. The square root of negative 1 is i times well, what's going on over here? Now, I'm going to break this up a bit more just to make sure you understand what I'm doing. I've got negative 1, so the square root of negative 1. And 32 won't square root, but there is a perfect square in 32. I'm going to reduce this. There's a 16 times 2. So the negative 1, I'm going to leave separate, the square root of 16, and the square root of 2. Well, the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 16 is 4. So we're going to have 9i times 4i squared 2. 9 and 4 is 36. i squared and 2. Now, if I had left this the way it was and I just multiplied, my answer would be positive 36 square root of 2. But if I take the i out like I'm supposed to, i squared is what? Yeah, it is negative 1. So negative 36 square root of 2. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at 4 minus 3i over 2 minus 5i. 
Simplify this. Well, it looks pretty simple already. If this were an x instead of an i, be done. But i is a square root, right? i is a square root of negative 1. And you can't leave a radical in the denominator if you're writing your final answer. So this, though it doesn't look like it, needs to be rationalized. We need to multiply by something that will get my square root of negative 1, my i, out of the denominator. And you do that when you have binomials by multiplying by something called the conjugate, which means that you simply change the sign, the middle sign, and multiply that to the top and bottom of the fraction. So we're going to get 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 5 is positive 20. Negative 3 and 2 is negative 6. I, negative 3 and positive 5 is negative 15. I squared all over 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times positive 5 is positive 10i. Negative 5 and 2 is negative 10i. You might not need to show this work because you know the middle term is going to cancel out, but you know I'm teaching, so I have to. And negative 5 and positive 5 is negative 25i squared. So we've got the positive and negative 10 canceling out. And because of space, I'm not going to write a new line, but what is i squared? Negative 1. What is i squared? Negative 1. So we have 8, and that's positive 15, right? So 8 plus 15 is 23. Uh, what do we have here? We got 20 minus 6 is 14. Over 4 minus, oh, no, not minus, that's plus. So 4 and a positive 25 make 29. Now, this is not done. Complex numbers must have a real and an imaginary part. So I'm simply going to split this apart and give each fraction its own denominator of 29. And bam! Got it done. Ooh, I got two and a half minutes. Let's see if we can try and solve a quadratic formula, shall we? Or a quadratic equation. Okay, last example. Let's see if we can solve this equation. Now don't forget, when you solve an equation, you're trying to find out where that equation crosses the x-axis. We're trying to find out when y equals 0, where is this graph going to cross the x-axis? Well, this is a parabola, one square term. And it might factor, but I want to show you the use of the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Well, when you have an equation solved for 0, and your exponents count down, this is a, this is b, and this is c. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Negative b, or the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared times a times c all over 2a. Now you might notice every time I do substitution, I use parentheses. That will save your butt when it comes to making sign errors later on, especially if you're using your 83s and 84s and any kind of like scientific calculator that allows you to do the type in the syntax. Um, you want to be careful of your signs, of course, and make sure your answers are right. Parentheses will help that happen. So we have negative 12 plus or minus the square root. This is 144. This uh, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 20 is 160 over 2 times 2, which is 4. This comes out to be negative 12 times the square root of negative 16 all over 4. And I'm running out of space. And look, I'm trying to square root a negative 16. Well, the square root of 16 I can do, it's 4. But, and the negative comes out as imaginary, so we get negative 12 plus or minus 4i over 4. These two terms have a factor of 4 in them, so I can 